Hello everyone. Welcome to this new session. So in the previous sessions of this uh, subject that is electromagnetic theory, we have covered four modules. Okay. So now we have left with only one single module. Okay. That is module five. The name is uh, uh, there is not no, no particular name for this, but we have separate uh, many many concepts in this module, starting from Faraday's law. Okay. Faraday's law of uh, electromagnetic induction. Okay. So now let's first discuss what is what is this Faraday's law. Okay. So let's directly start the module now. The first concept is Faraday's law. Okay. Th this is basically the relationship between the electric field intensity and uh, ma magnetic field. The relationship between electric field and magnetic field. Okay. So this is the basics of this Faraday's law. So before starting this, let me let me analyze this figure here. So here they have kept one an galvanometer. Along with that, one stationary coil which is moving uh, in a rotational direction with the current I which is flowing through it. And here, just above that stationary coil, we have get one magnetomotive force or one magnet motion kind of an object with the north and south poles. And here, from south poles, the magnetomotive fields or the magnetic fields are going through this stationary coil in a particular set of direction. Okay. So now, uh, the Faraday proposed that if a current can produce a magnetic field. The magnetic field should be able to produce a current. Okay, so this is the proposition of Faraday. He proposed that whenever the current, when it produces magnetic field, the opposite or vice versa, the magnetic field also should be able to produce a current. Okay, so now this time-varying magnetic field produces an EMF or an electromotive force, which will establish a current in a closed loop. Okay, so this time-varying magnetic field would produce an EM, EMF. Which will establish a current in this closed loop. So you can see that when the production of EMF is happening, the current is going to flow through this uh, coil. Okay, so that would be in this closed loop. Okay. So now uh, he indicated one relation that E is equal to minus d phi by dt. Okay. So in this, the negative sign is an indication that EMF is in such a direction as to produce a current whose flux added to the original flux would reduce the magnitude of EMF. So the statement means that this statement also is corresponding to Lenz law. Okay. So that's why you can uh, make a note of this here. Okay. In the exam, they might be asking state Lenz law uh, along with that the relationship between electric and magnetic field. Okay. You can directly write this derivation along with this Lenz law. Okay. So that is why uh, here they, they say that as to produce the current whose flux added to the original flux. So this is not the original flux here. This is one imaginary flux okay, flowing through this uh, particular charge E okay, as to produce the current whenever the, this charge produces the current, the flux added to the original flux would reduce the magnitude of EMF. Okay, yeah. So now pro pro the process of inducing an EMF in a coil by placing it in time varying field is uh, basically called as electromagnetic induction okay so this is the definition of electromagnetic induction here so if the closed path is having n number of turns so we can write that e is equal to minus n d phi by dt where this uh, n uh, what to say uh, it uh, says that this n consists of n number of turns okay it might be having one fixed number of turns okay so that's why it's called as minus n d phi by dt but we know that in general E or we can say that charge Q is defined by line integral of E dot dl, right? Yeah. So if line integral E is equal to line integral of E dot dl, so therefore line integral of E dot dl is equal to minus d phi by dt. So in place of E, now in place in this equation, I've replaced E by line integral of E dot dl is equal to minus d phi by dt, or we can simply write it as uh, take minus d by dt common outside, and you know that this phi is equal to surface integral of b dot ds right this is from gauss law we have studied gauss law right from gauss law we will be getting this relation that is phi is equal to surface integral of b dot ds so that's why in place of phi here i have written the surface integral of b dot ds so we can directly write it as a line integral of e dot dl is equal to minus so i am taking this derivation d by dt inside the integral so that this would be one partial derivative now minus double integral of dou by dou t of b dot ds so this equation obtained here is called as maxwell's equation in integral form okay so this is the faraday's uh, law and we can say that faraday's law from this faraday's law we are getting one maxwell's equation in integral form similarly in order to convert this into point form we have one more that is from stokes theorem we know that 
line integral of e dot dl is equal to surface integral of del cross e dot ds okay so this is the relation which we get from stokes theorem okay similarly now what we need to do is in place of e dot d line integral of e dot dl is replaced by this term so therefore what it would be surface integral of del cross e dot ds is equal to minus surface integral of dou by dou t b dot ds okay so now what we can do is from this both sides also we can cancel this uh, what to say surface integral and ds okay so if we cancel this what would be remaining with del cross e is equal to minus dou b by dou t okay so this equation is in point uh, point form that is maxwell's equation in point form which is uh, found from faraday's law okay so in this we can conclude that from this point form equation time changing magnetic field produces an electric field so this is the basic thing which we need to be remembering when we are deriving the faraday's law that is time changing magnetic field produces an electric field that is time changing magnetic fields so you can see dou by dou t okay so the uh, partial derivative of this magnetic field with respect to time that is time changing magnetic field produces an electric field which is given in the quantity of del cross e okay yeah so now for this faraday's law in order to prove this its condition let's see one simple problem here which has solved okay that is given electric field e is given as 2x cube ax vector minus 4x plus 4x power 4 ay vector volts per meter we need to show that this field cannot arise from static distribution of charge okay so now what we need to do is uh, uh, write the formula for del cross e okay then we need to show that del cross e is not equal to zero okay because the condition they have given is that the the field cannot arise from static distribution of charge okay so now what we need to do is find the value of del cross e now the first row right ax ay az dou by dou x dou by dou y dou by dou z and these are the coefficients that is 2x cube and 4x power 4 and az vector they have not given any term so that's why it is zero so after the cross multiplication and uh, the taking the data uh, what to say determinant we would be getting the answer of del cross e as 16x cube az vector okay so if you but take a note here uh, if you look at here what we have we can conclude that the electric field can be due to static charges or due to time changing magnetic field in this problem we have obtained del cross e is equal to 16 x cube az vector so therefore we can conclude that the field is due to time changing magnetic field okay because what was the condition here obtained time time changing magnetic field produces an electric field right so therefore in this in this problem the field is due to time changing magnetic field okay so that's why therefore we can prove that del cross e is equal to minus dou b by dou t since del cross e is not equal to zero okay so in the question they have mentioned that show that this field cannot arise from static distribution of charge okay that is we should we need to be proving that del cross e should not be equal to zero that all we have proved here right in this problem del cross e is not equal to zero because we are getting del cross e as some quantity answer here okay so therefore we can say that uh, if uh, if this field cannot arise from static distribution of charge so therefore this field is due to time changing magnetic field okay so that's why this field cannot arise due to static distribution of charge okay so we have one more note here that is if del cross e equal to zero then we say that the field is due to static distribution of charge okay so whenever we get del cross e is equal to zero then we can conclude that the field is due to static distribution of charge else the field is not due to the static distribution of charge whenever we not get whenever we get del cross e not equal to zero it is due to time changing magnetic field okay so this was all about this problem here so now let's see one one more concept which, which is very very important so this is the next concept that is displacement current or inconsistency in ampere's law okay so this is one more derivation okay that is maxwell's equation in point form which is derived from ampere's law or we can call it as inconsistency in the ampere's law okay so now let's see what is this so we know that ampere's law in point form is given by del cross h is equal to j okay where this h is the magnetic field intensity and j is the current density and from ampere's law in the module uh, 4 we have seen this relation that is del cross h is equal to j so now what we can do is just do one thing that is del cross h is equal to j minus 0 at this term minus 0 it's we know that j minus 0 is j only so that's why it won't affect this term so just uh, del cross h is equal to j vector minus 0 and name this as equation 1 
so now we'll take divergence on both sides that is del dot del cross h is equal to del dot j is equal to 0 okay so now we can say that divergence of curl of a vector is identically 0 okay always the divergence of curl of a vector is identically 0 we can conclude that this term is also equal to 0 so from continuity equation we have one more relation right that is del dot j so we can say that this term is 0 from continuity equation we have one more relation that is del dot j is equal to minus dou by dou t of rho v okay this is from continuity equation we have discussed it now equation 1 is true if minus dou by dou t of rho v equal to 0 okay so but this here is the unrealistic limitation okay so therefore equation 1 to be amended before we accept it for time changing field we need to be assuming one condition that is del cross h is equal to j vector plus g vector okay so now what we need to be doing is again take divergence on both sides in this above equation okay that is del dot del cross h is equal to del dot j plus del dot g is equal to 0 now replacing uh, del dot g is equal to uh, dou by dou t of rho v okay so now what we will be getting is replacing rho v by del dot d okay that is replacing rho v uh, rho v by del dot d what we are getting del dot g is equal to dou by dou t of rho v is, is replaced by del dot d from divergence equation we have right del dot d is equal to rho v okay this is from divergence okay so that's why i have replaced rho v by del dot d so now what we would be getting del dot dou d by dou t okay if we simplify this and write it like this so but dou d by dou t also we can replace it by dou by dou d by dou t is equal to dou by dou t of epsilon times e since we have one more relation d is equal to epsilon e right so that's why in place of d i have replaced it by epsilon e so therefore take this epsilon outside here so epsilon dou e by dou t is equal to j d okay so this is the formula for j d that is epsilon dou e by dou t okay so this is j d so now what i'll tell you what is j d this JD is called as the displacement current density okay and for JD this is the formula for JD which I have written here that is epsilon dou E by dou T okay so now what we need to be doing is from which we get del dot G is equal to uh, dou D by dou T okay so del dot G is equal to this is replaced by epsilon dou E by dou T so now Ampere's law in point form becomes what now del cross H is equal to JC plus JD okay del cross h is equal to jc plus jd whenever we apply ampere's law in point form okay so now i've seen i've told you what is jd but jc jc is equal to sigma times e okay this is the formula for jc and where this jc is called as conduction current density and this is the final equation obtained when ampere's law in point form becomes inconsistent in case of uh, maxwell's equation of point form for a displacement current current okay so that's why we are getting del cross, del cross h is equal to jc plus jd where jc and jd are defined as conduction current and displacement current densities so that's all for this session hope you understood this concept so please like share subscribe and support us and also for our previous videos for all the uh, previous modules you can refer our playlists okay we have created all the uh, videos for you all so refer those as well and also you can uh, if you see on, on our right of our screen, we have created the playlist for all the model paper solutions. So you can refer it also. Please click on that playlist and refer the other videos. So that's all. Thank you.